Petersburg on ABC. Brought to you by Honda, an official vehicle of the IZOD IndyCar Series. IZOD. Go to IZOD.com to see the latest in IZOD color and performance. And Firestone, the first name in Indy racing. Beautiful shots of the Bay Area here in St. Petersburg, Florida. And back in 2005, a young racer named Dan Weldon fell in love with this town. And no wonder why. He came here and won the race in 2005, leading the Andretti Green team to a top four sweep. It's never been done before or since in the IndyCar Series. And of course, last May, Dan Weldon kissing the bricks for the second time at the Indianapolis 500. None of us knew at that time that would be the last time we would see Dan Weldon in victory lane. exactly what we thought, very intense. I was holding my breath. Um, I was trying to find a very safe spot. It was only in the beginning. Dan Weldon started 34th in this field. He has moved up 10 spots. I saw the first puff of smoke. Then you saw all the smoke and basically all the hell broke loose. I was lucky the way it sort of landed in many different ways. Then I came to a rest, actually looking at Dan. You know, I could see that yeah, he was in a lot of trouble. The, the part that still rings in your mind is, you know, after the accident, you know, we did one lap and we had to weave through cars, parts, things on fire. Like, it, it honestly looked, you know, like devastation. It looked like a bomb exploded it. Somebody had dropped a bomb from an airplane. He'll be fine, he'll be fine, it's Dan. He's gonna be okay and you're always hoping for the most positive, you know, kind of uh, result, but you know, as time drags out, you know, there's, there's something pretty serious going on. I was actually in the in the IndyCar uh, truck uh, with Brian Barnhart, and uh, I think Dario and Tony were in there as well. <clears throat> and uh, we got the word that he died on the helicopter. And I mean, it was just it was it was a bad scene. I got put to do a very difficult task, which was tell all the other drivers in the drivers' meeting, and that probably was the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life, and I hope I don't ever have to do it again. IndyCar, its drivers and team owners, has decided to end the race. In honor of Dan Weldon, the drivers have decided to do a five-lap salute in his honor. 30 seconds before we start the engine, Stagliani came and poked his head into my car, and Somebody had cut Dan's belt out of his driver's suit, and he handed it to me. And I was holding it for those laps, and that was the longest five laps of my life, for sure. To start the 2012 season in St. Pete, is, uh, it's going to be hard. I think uh, none of us had raced an IndyCar race since what happened to him. It's a fear that we all have in the back of our heads. That day it was brought to the front. You have to put it to the back of your head. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I've thought of that in the last four months. My job when I get in the car is not to do that. My job is to clear my mind, to focus. 100% on the job in hand, and if you can't do it, you don't want to do it, or you can't, you're not able to do it, 
unfortunately, you're probably their own business. We all are exposed to that, from the biggest disasters to the silliest one. And, you know, if, if I could choose a way to go, you know, be in the race car as well. Trackside, they are remembering Dan Weldon today as well. In fact, the track has put together ribbons in Dan's memory, and they are selling those with all the proceeds going to Alzheimer's research. Dan's mother suffers from Alzheimer's. And also some of the Lionheart decals for Dan on the helmets of several of the drivers. As we come back inside, uh, you, what you heard Tony Kanan say it may be difficult for all of you that are, you know, any type of job other than what these guys do. But this is your way of life. This is what you do. And Marty, it may sound cold what Tony Kanan said, but, um, you know, as a driver, you know what you signed up for. You know when you go to a test or you get in the car for a race that you may not come back. And although it may be hard on us and hard on the crew, and, and you think about it, those guys went testing this whole complete winter, so it became a little easier for them. I think it's harder on the spouses. And I know that after I retired, I started to have some conversations with my wife about just how tough it is because they didn't sign up for this. They didn't understand what they got themselves into and we're on the track we're doing what we love and we're in our zone and for the spouses that's the difficult part well dan's presence obviously has been felt all weekend long now 26 have to climb into the car and do what no one else is going to do that's right how do you focus and that's the, that's the enjoyment of getting into the car but actually in times like this it makes you wonder whether you want to do it or not but once you get in the car and you put your belts on and you put the visor on as soon as they start the car up and you feel it you get into a different zone and that's what makes this whole thing worth it well it's about time to go racing, not only for Dan Weldon, but for the 26 racers that are in this field as they will try and focus on what the job is at hand, what they do for a living.